Phoenix lander digs into frozen water on Mars, it finds new evidence that the red planet could once have harbored life. But in the autumn of 2008, Phoenix's own life is about to end. On Mars, the wind comes along and whips up the dust, which is very, very fine grain, like flour, extremely fine grain material, whips it up into the atmosphere and it slowly settles out, blanketing everything. Red dust coats the solar panels of the Phoenix lander. Sunlight, its only source of power, can't get through. The Phoenix lander has to spend a lot of time recharging its batteries because we know that it's going to get very cold at night and it's going to have to run those heaters at night to, to stay alive. On November 2nd, 2008, Phoenix shuts down for the last time. As the Martian winter deepens, frozen carbon dioxide piles up and imprisons the probe in a tube of dry ice. But Phoenix's data continues to be analyzed. Going to Mars and taking measurements on the surface, getting detailed data about the history of Mars and Mars chemistry of the surface uh, was an essential piece to determining for sure that water existed on Mars. Water is essential to life. But according to the latest evidence, it's only one of many forces that shaped Mars. You can kind of break down our thinking of Mars now into maybe like four quarters of a football game. The first quarter, from about 4.6 to 3.2 billion years ago, is action-packed. Mars forms along with the other planets as swirling gas and debris combine and cool into a rocky world. Then, Mars is bombarded and scarred by meteoroids. There was a lot of cratering going on, and then towards the end of that period, there was a lot of geologic features that, that suggest that there was water flowing on the surface. That new evidence includes this series of ridges, photographed in 2009 by NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. It's the first definitive lakeshore discovered on Mars. The remains of a lake the size of North America's Lake Champlain. Every piece of evidence about the presence and the history of water on Mars is so important to determining whether we might be alone in the universe. Some scientists even say that three and a half billion years ago, an ocean the size of the Atlantic covered one third of Mars. Maybe uh, with enough time and enough water, life formed on Mars as well. As the first quarter of Mars history ends, the second starts with a bang, as volcanoes reshape the planet. There was significant volcanic activity. Olympus Mons is the biggest volcano in the solar system. So we know there were big volcanoes in the past. Mars is blanketed with black volcanic basalt, like the basalt found around Hawaiian volcanoes. And the chemicals released from volcanoes, including sulfur, mix with the water that was left and make things acidic, kind of like acid rain on Earth and that sort of thing. At the same time, the atmosphere seems to be shrinking and water becoming more scarce and less stable on the surface. The loss of Mars's atmosphere meant that liquid water could no longer exist on its surface. Water exists on the surface of the Earth only because of the atmospheric pressure pushing down on it. Whatever water is on Mars evaporates or freezes. In the third quarter of its history, Mars probably begins turning red from ferrous oxide, rust in the dust. Take a fresh volcanic rock in Hawaii or Iceland and let it sit out in the Earth's atmosphere, and it's going to turn red and brown over time. It's going to oxidize. The same kind of thing could have happened on Mars. In its final quarter, Mars goes into a deep freeze. From around 100 million until 2 million years ago, large glaciers form 
and carve out new patterns in basins and craters. From a warmer, wetter planet to a cold, dry world. Mars in a nutshell, according to recent evidence. It had a thicker atmosphere, it had water, it may have had rain, it had snow, uh, it has all kinds of things that are familiar to us. And it's just fascinating to think that we can go back in time with these missions and study an early sort of Earth-like Mars that's now gone. But while there's strong evidence for past water on Mars, these 2009 satellite pictures seem to show something impossible. Flowing liquid water on the surface. There could be events when water that has been kept subsurface or frozen comes gushing out and runs down the walls of these craters. This is one of the most exciting things in the past decade, is seeing those pictures of the gullies. Because when I grew up, uh, I, was, I was taught that there's no way liquid water could be stable on Mars today. And this uh, kind of flies in the face of, of the physics, right? And that's, that's kind of exciting, because it means that we, we might have something wrong. The initial announcement of finding them proposed that ice that was melting or an aquifer coming up. There's a whole different set of theories in recent study that it could be from carbon dioxide, uh, the dry ice going to a gas, and then that gas basically doing a gas lubrication of the sand that's flowing down. And frankly, it's still in the midst of, of exploratory science right now. And some of these marks have been shown to be dust flows. I hope not all of them. I'd like them to be water. From ancient oceans to yesterday's flowing gully, the search for water and life on Mars is an ongoing quest. A quest that, like a climber's path along an unfamiliar course, is filled with false starts and unexpected detours. That's what happens when this photograph, taken near the Martian equator, reminds a lot of people of this. This is Rachel, a busy mom. She starts at dawn and so does her back pain.